if you happen to have seen this video where I created one, two, three, four backgrounds and then my goal was to doodle over them and I got these two done. So at that end of this video, I said to you all, hey, if you want to see me finish it, then please write in the comments below. And I really am grateful. I'm going to do a bit of mixed media on this one. I've got this beautiful tissue paper. I've got a video on that as well, where I show you how you can create little multicolored bits of tissue paper. And I thought how lovely it would be to glue this down and have the painting underneath come through. And the thing I thought I might do is this one up here, I'm going to do with mixed media as in some pencils, some pens, some stuff like that. What I'm going to do is glue this one down first and I want to glue it down with a transparent glue so that I will be able to see both layers. Glue. I'm going to use Mod Podge. I've got a big uh, brush that's cheap and I don't care and a jar of water. I'm going to put this in position. It's pretty much the same size. It's a little bit smaller, tiniest bit. I'm going to see if I can line it up and then I'm going to paint on top. Now there's heaps of glue on this brush, so I'm not going to use any more. And I'm always keen to get the lid on a big jar of glue like that. It's a pretty big investment. Jar of um, Mod Podge. Don't know whether this is going to turn into a wrinkled mess or not. The um, It's swelling but that's because I've added moisture uh, in first in the form of Mod Podge and now in the form of water. So it's going to swell and um, if I'm lucky it'll go back to a pretty original shape. This one's gone beautifully flat. There's some lovely collage that will, if you care to comment down below, I will finish it off on a video. I'm going to put this so that you can see it really well. Also, now I think about it, this is quite good for me to be looking at it at, from a different angle and because um, I've just been assuming they're kind of landscapey. So with this one, now that I'm looking at it in a portrait orientation, I'm going to go with it and consider a design that encourages um, your eye perhaps to come up and down or perhaps it comes from the top and comes down and towards the bottom. I'm going to consider colour first and I've got red, green, yellow. Uh, so I should, um, if I like the idea of getting cohesion with my colour, I could stick within those colours. If I want to go to the other end of the spectrum, I could be going for some opposites, maybe the red and more of a, a green, a yellow, and I could introduce purple. But I think there's already enough going on colour-wise and I'm going to pick a colour to become the dominant colour. And I'm going to pick turquoise just because I like turquoise. <laughs> I find it uh, really calming and it's beautiful and it mixes with many things. So I'm looking for turquoise. I was looking through my markers and pencils and things and realized that I hadn't yet used this set. Years ago my girlfriend gave me a set of watercolor crayons and just a little set and I've loved them and I've been waiting all this time to buy new ones <laughs> because I really like the crayons and this is the first time I've opened it so I'm a bit excited about that. Something I love to do is limit my palette so now I've limited my palette. All right, much better. I'm going to now think about my composition. We know that it's portrait in orientation. I love this idea that as Westerners, we might enjoy this as an entry point. Westerners read from left to right and there's a theory that um, that's more satisfying for Westerners to see paintings where the composition is leading you in from the left. And this is kind of leading you in from the left. It also has a natural kind of zigzag to it that's rather dynamic. So I'm going to try and think about those sort of things. So what I'm going to do is make a tonal change here. I'm kind of adding texture as well, aren't I? But make a tonal change which will draw your eye. So that's a compositional method that I use all the time. And what's funny about it is it's it just it often doesn't work the way I'm planning or, or imagining it's going to but I just do find it's a helpful way to move forward if you've got uh, any opinions about what I'm doing here that would be 
Uh, very cool to hear whether or not you agree or if you think that it's just a silly method that doesn't work. And the method I'm talking about is I put a composition, uh, I put a contrast in um, tone here. And what I'm hoping is now when you look at it, do you come in this way? Let's say that that's worked, that you've come in this way and now you're looking for the next hook, the next reason to remain with this painting. So I'm going to put some of this beautiful bright green. I've been doing lots of um, up and down marks, which is, I was doing it unconsciously, I be, but I've just realized that this, as this is a composition that goes upright, so I'm kind of delighted. All right, so I am, and hopefully I'm attracting your eye to here and to here because there's a contrast in tone. So I've got a contrast in color, a contrast in tone. Does your eye come in? And then I'm giving you something to look at here. And, so I've got some little marks that might look like stones. They might look like a fence. Um, they're great ways, by the way, of leading a viewer into a painting using steps or stones. And I want the viewer to come all the way over here. So there's that beautiful red there. And if I put this more brighter green, it's more of a complement to the red. Hopefully that will kind of draw your eye over there. All right, okay, so I, as you could see, I haven't planned it out from the beginning except for the very basics of coming in from this direction and going up. So I finished working here, I've given something in the mid ground to look at, and then I'm hoping your eye comes up here and I need some way now for this to be compositionally shooting your eye up to there. I sometimes wonder whether or not it's um, wonderful or silly. And again, boy, I'd love to hear people's thoughts on that. So cool. Okay, I've shifted into this other blue, but I have introduced the other blue down here. I'm just gonna meld them a little bit. So the advantage in using a water-soluble crayon on watercolor is if there are any marks I want to remove or change or highlight or anything like that, then it's really easy to do because I can dissolve them I can also do beautiful soft edges if I want to. Okay, so I've got this beautiful round here with the green. So I'm just inventing a round one there. And oh, we've got this round one here. Cool. Emphasize its roundness and go over there. Okay, yeah, like down here. That's the perfect opportunity to wet it. I've got a brush and I'm just sticking it in my water jar to soften this off. <laughs> Oh wow, that just like melted. It's beautiful. I haven't used these before. Oh, I've said that, sorry. Overly repeating myself is a bit of a hangover from class as well, because I found that often, I'm gonna, I found that often in class, people were, um, you know, a bit distracted and I'd start to talk and explain um, what we're gonna do. And I realized that very quickly <laughs> that a lot of people don't listen at the beginning. They take a little while to tune in. So. I loved to give really good value in the lesson and I just like to start on time. In fact, I hated art classes where they wouldn't start on time. I'm just enjoying transferring that beautiful neo color around. Oh, let's soften the outside of that. Wow. Anyway, I was making a very good point about repeating myself in the classroom. So yeah, I was just saying that I would repeat myself quite often in the classroom just as just to help people kind of bring their attention in and that way I didn't have to repeat myself from the beginning. Okay, I'm just slowly bringing in. There's this beautiful, these beautiful ones. Now, if I put something on the end of it, what will they look like? No, but I do have all these beautiful yellow dots down here. I think I might repeat that and see if I can make that, oopsie, make that look good. I'm gonna use my non-dominant. And so for you guys, it might look, well, for most of you, it will look quite normal that I'm holding it, of course, Having said that, I probably have a bit of a, ugh, me. probably holding it a little awkwardly. And this is so pretty, this one. I think that's one, that one there. These are incredibly similar. Oh, that is more turquoise. Oh, look, beautiful. Okay, I'm going to do a similar kind of star thing, but these are going to be more organized. Okay, this has created a really interesting spot for um, the viewer to come and stop and kind of be entertained. So perhaps this goes up to here and then we bounce it over to here with, uh, they're not complementary, they're analogous. 
with some analogous colors. We bounce them over here and those analogous colors bring us up to this beautiful red and green together. I'm gonna change the back of it there, turquoise. Continue with my beautiful turquoise. Just adding some color that's gonna take us up to there. And I want to use my brush again, soften all that off. The, in terms of the color, it's looking a uh, very Hawaiian shirt. I've got too much of the primaries, too much of the yellow, the red and the green. It's um, not working color wise. So I'm gonna switch out. The other thing that you can do is a bit of squinting to go, have I got enough white light? Yeah, it's really lovely. And enough, enough mid-tones is always enough mid-tones. And then my darks, I am missing the darks. So I'm gonna go black and oh, this is a brownie. I'm gonna start with the mid gray. It's starting to look a little bit like a strange bird and that this could be the feet. So I'm going to emphasize that strange idea. And this way I'm adding some beautiful darks as well. Okay, the tone is instantly working. There's a beautiful uh, watermark there. There's like back run that occurred. And I think that I will make that more important too. So I'm gonna run the black along here, the dark gray, draw more attention, switch to the black and really hone in on this section in the middle. And I'm getting lighter and lighter and lighter as I go up in amongst the marks that could be trees, could be rocks, could be <laughs> pebbles. Right, more water. Um, I wanted to soften that one, and that one, and a bit of softening here, a bit of softening up there. Doesn't move on the first stroke, but moves really well on the second. I'm just going in and out. All right, I'm gonna soften all of that. Ooh, here we go. And that's drawn way more attention to the middle. And, uh, oh, I like that a lot. I wonder, I should draw into that with a really light color and I might get a beautiful effect. Red, because there's these beautiful pops of red. Look, oh, red into red, it's beautiful. Yeah. I have a really bad habit of pressing down too hard. Oh, it's just turning the edges of the black kind of pinky. It's hard to get the red in on top of the black though. Adding a bit of the color in a few spots. I love that idea, unless you're making a, a strong point about your color. I love the idea of moving your color a, a bit and a bit and a bit um, in multiple places. Hey, that red is really winning now. Look at the difference. Suddenly the red is um, absolutely uh, popping. I'm going to go ahead and put in some more of those dots and repeat that. And I wonder if I add just a few up here, whether that will bring your eye right up there. <laughs> they look a little bit like flies bothering the character. Either that or my imagination's just really having a good time. I'm just re-emphasizing the eye and hopefully the eye brings you back. I'm just putting in some lines of the way I, I actually want the viewer's eyes to travel. I think it helps, that's why I do these things. But I often find that I've changed it so much sometimes it uh, doesn't matter that much. I've really enjoyed sharing stuff with you today. It's a really good day in terms of my ability to create and um, talk about what I'm doing. Just cast your eyes back over to this one. Move it back around. This one here, very wet, very swollen. Anyway, I'd love some suggestions about what to do. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope that you get something out of the video and if you liked this one, then you're probably gonna love this. Thanks guys, bye.